Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed the last episode with uh, Brandon Joe Williams. A little interesting and maybe controversial there. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, you know, I don't necessarily uh, agree with all of all opinions or anything like that on the show, but, you know, I let people speak their, their truth and their side. So uh, if that's something you want to, you want to try out, go for it. Uh, but we're back today with a very familiar guest and he's here to back that ass up. Uh, I want to welcome back to the show for the umpteenth time. The Southern Dandy of Almani, the original White Delight, and Whitey. Oh man! Like it said, it said I had the choice to leave the meeting or be recorded. Um, but I guess I better perform, right? <laughs> now, now you've got yeah. to with that with that intro. Right? Oh man! Well, it's good yeah. to be back. It's good to be so back. I feel like doing, we haven't done this in a bit, you know? No, we're doing our our series of wine in the box again. We started that last one. You got like. You had like what fifteen thousand uh, listeners on that one. How, how does that make you feel? What? Wow, people are makes me feel weird actually because I feel like we didn't really talk about much, <laughs> and and it it was really like just random what we were talking about. And so, yeah, it's weird to think that people are just like listening to a random conversation. Fly on the wall, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's what they're gonna get here too. You're gonna get another fucking dose of random. I guess it's better than nothing. But uh, hey, back to that disclaimer, man. Do not do any of that stuff that guy said. I listened to that podcast. Do not carry a concealed weapon, like just because you think that you're not a part of a country that you're actually living in. Did you? I mean, okay. It, and I mean, again, I, I don't bring people on here to <laughs> shoot them down or like, uh, you know, debate with them or anything, unless that's what the episode's about, which, you know, I just, I, it's not. I wanted this guy to come on and talk about, you know, stuff he you know feels like he's an expert on and uh maybe promote some you know his his book or anything like that his website hey, that's fine don't get me wrong but i enjoy watching those videos where the guy's like i'm not showing the cop my id or whatever like i'm i'm just waiting for the cop to bust the window or whatever and then <laughs> like it goes to court but you got to understand that like this guy's gonna go to court and he's gonna get his window busted and there's gonna be like trouble or whatever. <laughs> like why why put yourself in a situation like that? It's like let's test the system. No. Yeah. <sighs> well, I mean, as long as we don't have any fucking chomos on here, we're all right. <laughs> you heard that phrase before, Whitey Chomo? What what is it? Chomo? Yeah, it's not no. a good phrase. Oh my god. You, you Are you gonna have go to around... explain it off the air? <laughs> well, you can't go around calling people chomos. Let's take uh the first uh, le- letters in each one. Shh. Yeah, I think I, I think I put it together right now. Uh, yeah. but we'll uh, just, yeah. Yeah, that's what the, I guess. Yeah, uh, not. I know you hate the politics and whatnot, but I think that's what the, the, uh, the, the, the super conservatives uh, accuse everybody of upon meeting them. No, I'm into politics right now, actually. Uh, how about that fucking? Uh, right now they got that balloon or whatever from China floating over. Jesus Christ! Uh, it's like the like I, I I read news every day. And that headline won't fucking leave. Well, they just exploded it. Oh, really? Over uh, the so Atlantic. Oh. Are we going to be breathing in these spores soon? Or? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I mean, isn't that the, the fear or whatever? Like there's something in there or whatever. That's, that's, why, that's why they didn't explode it over land. They did it over the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, could, how high up was that thing? Because couldn't you just take like a helicopter and like. Well, like, I mean, I, I could have gone with a coat hanger to Montana and been like, all right, I got it. It's a balloon. I mean, like, I, I understand it's the size of three school buses, but it's floating in the air. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was full uh, of uh, fried chicken and candy. Like couldn't you just, it. yeah, couldn't they have just taken like a giant fan or something like that and blown, <laughs> blown it back? <laughs> and sent it right back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done like a fucking volleyball game with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm starting to think Herschel Walker was right. They're sending us their bad air and we're giving them their our good air. And, oh man! And what's, and what's that all about? I bet you didn't know that I knew that, did you? Oh man, that, <laughs> that's hilarious. Speaking of politics, I want to say right now that I think uh, I think Potter did something right, <laughs> like before we did. Like he he was on board the fucking chicken game, man. Like he had chickens laying eggs before 
Oh yeah. It, it became a fucking thing. Now like chicken eggs. You have to get a loan. Are, yeah, you have to get a loan, yeah. <laughs> you can't eat eggs no more, man. I'm still it's paying nice. off this morning's fucking over easy. Oh Jesus. I, I keep telling my wife, I'm like, fuck, like we keep eating like this, we're gonna go broke. You know? <laughs> like, she wants to cook like a, a Sunday meal and stuff, and I'm like, we there's gotta be something different, you know. I guess it's pancakes from now on. Well, I mean that has eggs in it too. Not the not the just add water shit, man. Oh, okay. You're <laughs> you're eating those type of pancakes. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, you making lady. you making pancakes from scratch over there? I make everything from scratch. I see. Uh you you know what? Yeah, and this is gonna lead to our conversation here, but you haven't really been on uh on the Facebook, so you're not seeing all the good shit that I'm cooking. Actually, you 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 kind of were, right? On what on Facebook? Mm-hmm. So <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> so okay so years and years and years ago we're talking like a decade ago probably i was playing uh like farmville with my wife mm-hmm. and so i created like a like a little gaming account and i would talk to her through that account when we were dating mm-hmm. and um but i've never been like big on social media and stuff you know like i just can't i it doesn't interest me to the I can't bring myself to look but, at the comments and stuff. Hold, hold on a second. Let's call it what it is. What I'm calling you out here. Okay. You let's create, you, you created a fake troll account. Go on. So I created a fake troll account. I, I didn't create a fake troll account. It was a game account. I didn't want those. Um, <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. I didn't want the coin, the, cause they give you like, uh, you, you have to get friends in those stupid games or whatever. Like this is, this, here's another thing that I fucking hate or whatever. Like they, they force you to like, friend random people in order to progress in these stupid games and I, I mean stupid games because i realize at the end of the day you're just clicking the same thing over and over and over again and waiting for the timer to run out so you can click again hmm. and then when you get antsy because you're like well, shit i can't click anymore right now and like i i really feel the urge to click then you spend money in their little cash shop or whatever so that way you can click faster mm-hmm. it's dumb man like it really is. Um, so you had your troll account, so, you had your so game I, <laughs> profile. Go on. So anyway, I had that for a while, and then like like my my wife would message me like uh, like when things were going on at the house or something like through there or you know during the day like I would tell her like hey I'm gonna be late from work or whatever. It was just something quick like it was the easiest way to get to her because it was a nice uh, loud ding on her tablet or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just got used to using that. So one day, <laughs> one day, one of my, my gaming buddies goes, he goes, Hey dude, he goes, uh, you know, you're posting Taliban stuff or something like that. Like, like some ISIS bullshit. And I go, what? Oh, shit. He goes, dude, your account just posted this. And he shows me this picture. And it's like, it's like guys with ISIS flags, like in some sort of like writing that I can't understand. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh shit. So I go to try to change my password. And then like, that's when all hell broke loose because, I, I couldn't, they had banned my account. The guy had posted so many times by the time I got to it, he posted like 40 times, like reposts of the same fucking terrorist bullshit. Huh. I go, I go to, to try to change all my account and stuff. And then uh, it didn't fucking work. Hmm. And they, they wouldn't let me change. I couldn't talk to anybody. Facebook is stupid, man. You can't live chat anybody. There's no, it's all automated. It's like you're talking to a computer. It's like, hey, you have a problem yeah. or whatever, like, and, and you tell it what's up. And, like, it either has a, a good response or it's like, fuck you. I'm going to give you a bunch of bullshit and you're going to go around in a circle for four yeah. fucking hours. There's no customer service. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, this is the, the thing that, the, like, people were relying on at some point for the president to fucking talk to or something, right? Like, he started there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were relying too goddamn much on social media. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's so it's I, crazy. I, I actually I didn't I, I didn't have your uh, your your fake troll account as a friend or anything, so I didn't know you were posting that shit, man. How the you, hell did you, you didn't want that account? You would just get a bunch of spam like, oh, Al clicked like five hundred times on Farmville. Or <laughs> no, no, yeah, 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 definitely. But I'm saying like you know since I wasn't you know friended by it and you know you obviously didn't care about your friends. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't uh, realize that that's that was was go that was going on. How the hell did you get mixed up 
in the in the world of of the Taliban, Whitey? Well, uh, while I was busy not caring about my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So at that same time, like I I I had appealed a bunch of times. I got my account unlocked at some point, like after like several days of like trying to like write messages to this stupid automated system. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden the account it was like your account's been restored. As soon as my account got restored, they didn't even give me a chance to change the password or anything. Like it's a stupid system. The, whoever had the password probably got the same notification oh. and then fucking logged in and then posted another 20 messages of the same bullshit. So oh. it looked like I was just the same. So then they finally like said, um, there's like an appeal button, like, but there's no appealing that like, it's just, you know, you've got me in fucking limbo. So then they oh. just fucking deleted the account after so long. They're like in 30 days, you're gone in 20 days. You're gone in 10 days. You're gone. So they just started counting down. Yep. So any pictures or anything that were there or anything like everything's just fucking wiped. So I'm sure if they ever did give it back, it would just be a clean account. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's so stupid. So like, and, and these were obvious, like, like hacker fucking texts and shit. Like there was, yeah. it's like, they come on, you've got like 10 years or whatever of, of fucking like Farmville posts or something like that. And then you get like all of a sudden, like some fucking random shit. Yeah, so like if anybody ever did like any sort of like real like investigation, which I guess now they're going to investigate you, you know, for threatening our country's security and whatnot. Um, <laughs> wow. If, yeah, if anybody did any sort of investigation, they would just see like, all right, this motherfucker's just playing Farmville, right? Or like, <laughs> you know, writing sweet no- nothings to his wife, right? Oh man, sweet nothings to my wife. I got to <laughs> tell her that one. So you know, I'm bring, I'm I'm, I'm going to bring this on on the on the the next uh, installment of the shit show, and so. I want to see. Uh, I really want to hear Potter's assessment of the situation and how he blames the the left for infiltrating your personal account or your gaming account, whatever. Um, and then I want to hear Sosa's side because their 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 thoughts might be interesting on this. Hey, Potter's got to tell us all how to make a chicken coop or something, so that way we can all grow our own eggs. I fuck, agree. Fuck fifteen dollars for twenty eggs. <laughs> well, why do I think you know since uh Facebook screwed you? I think you got to come back like on a revenge tour at this point. Whitey's Revenge, Whitey's Revenge. I always like that name, it sounds cool. Um, I don't know, maybe you just come back and like you just start showing a bunch of ass pictures and stuff and like get yourself banned again <laughs> or showing a little skin. Uh, I, I, I did say I had to perform. I, I mean, <laughs> listen. You got banned the first time for, you know, uh, treason, I guess. Right. Oh, so man. the next, the next ban should be for, you know, sexual content. Who owns Facebook now? It's not Zuckerberg, right? He's just kind of one of the guys who, who runs the well, show. Apparently the Taliban. Hmm. I don't know, I don't man. Know. I have no idea. Nobody yeah. does. That's, uh, <laughs> I think it's one of those things that just got, uh, you know, that's out there. It doesn't have an owner anymore. It, it, it took on its own entity. It is what it is now. It's a living thing. It's just a glowing orb of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm. But moving on from your revenge tour, Whitey, um, <laughs> I did want to, you know, I know this and, and, and just, you know, for everybody listening, is this going to be a quick, you know, drop through, drop by episode? Because we're actually preparing for a very big episode that I know you're excited about, right? This is going to uh, be very a really cool about. episode. Yeah. And so... You know, we managed to secure a very uh, interesting guest, and you, 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 you want to just go ahead and rip the seal off of that one? Why do who, who are we talking to? Oh man, we are talking about none other than the icon Tommy Chong yeah. is going to be on the podcast. I'm yeah. like, this is one of the coolest freaking people I'm going to get to talk to. <laughs> yeah, and I think the the first thing I thought about when I got him, I'm like, oh, I got I, I got to tell Whitey, right? But I told I told the whole group chat and. Uh, I, was, I, I knew it was like on a, on a day you probably couldn't do it or a time you couldn't do it, but we made, you made the time and you're going to, you're going to be able to talk to him. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, this guy has been around forever. I mean, the guy was born in what, 1938. Mm-hmm. So this guy has stories. So it's, yeah. definitely stay tuned. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I've been saying, you know, like I, a lot of people are bringing me, Oh, you got to ask him about this. You got to ask him about that. Right. And I don't want to ask him like a fucking retrospective of his career. Like if you want to do that, go on, on Wikipedia, right? Go on IMDb, 
you know, you people know what's out there. I, I will touch base on, you know, really quickly, like his music career, um, you know, Up in Smoke and, and all the Cheech and Chong movies. And then just quickly talk about, hey, what are you currently doing now? Because he's fucking in his 80s and he's still active. Yeah. You know, so that's pretty amazing. But other than that, man, I just like anything that he talks about. I don't care if we were talking about fucking grooming pets or something like that. You know, he'll he, he'll make it interesting. Everything he says is interesting. I've been watching you know, a lot of interviews. Uh, we wa- I sent you that clip of him on that, that fake dating show and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of a lot of things I want to ask this guy. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm just like, I'm I'm looking forward to to listening back to this one. Mm-hmm. Wadi, are you gonna are you gonna smoke uh, marijuana with Tommy Chong? Um, I, I don't think so. I, I if he's if he's smoking, I will. But okay, I was gonna um, say, what the hell? But did I don't I think he's. For? I don't think he he fucking smokes anymore. Mm, I think you'd be mistaken. Why? Maybe, maybe I don't know. Like I like at some he's he's had you know bouts where he doesn't smoke i've heard and then uh mm-hmm. and then he'll be on oil or something like that like he'll just do a different kind of something <laughs> i think he does a lot of cbd i think hmm. but i don't yeah. know we can ask him you know i am uh having you on as the cannabis council well i guess i'll have to have something rolled then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um you know i don't know uh anything about that world so i figured if it starts getting too technical i'm gonna tag whitey in <laughs> yeah definitely i've been working in that field for a bit now and uh yeah just an interesting world you have it's like different a- now like than it's ever been i mean like it's a it's, everything's corporate you know <laughs> yeah do you have a question prepared about uh about sp- smoking pot that you want to ask him yeah i want to know uh where to get his stuff man like because it's super hard to get uh at least around here because i was looking <laughs> yeah. still I don't know. I mean, uh, he he doesn't sell it online or anything like that. I know that's how he. Uh, no, no, he, he does, but like it's in like Santa Ana or. Uh, oh, like you got to go pick it up. It's it's quite a bit away from us. Like it's not too too close. Mm-hmm. Like maybe we can petition something, you know. But you can't get, <laughs> you can't like get, get that stuff delivered or anything like that. I mean, like they usually have like a ten mile radius or something like that. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's not like fucking, fucking just down the street like DoorDash or something like that. No. no. You mean like DoorDash? Hey, Fabian, does that mean you're like hiring DoorDash drivers to drive like 100 miles and give them like a $2 Dude, tip? All right, check it out. That's not my <laughs> fault, all right? I, I used, uh, like Instacart. I used Instacart, right? All right. Um, and I ordered, uh, you know, I wanted to get some, some meat, but like from a Mexican, you know, market. And I'm like, okay, there's, you know, a bunch around here, but none of them are on, on Instacart. You know, everything was like fucking uh stater brothers you know ralph's whatever right and i saw northgate on there northgate market okay Okay. and so i thought oh i didn't know there was a northgate around here you know i'm in pomona um there's not a northgate around here (laughs) so (laughs) the driver was uh, was coming from almani right so now this is right uh you know towards the end of uh, the the work day uh it was like i don't know five six o'clock and that's like an over an hour of traffic uh, on a, on any given weekday. Yeah, yeah. You drove from Almani to Pomona. So, we- so you had this poor person driving traffic two ways because they got to come back. Yeah. <laughs> How much did you give them, Fabian? Well, well, what does the tip I, look like on that weird trip? Listen, the the food itself was like fifty bucks or sixty bucks. So the uh-huh. tip is a percentage of that, right? Right. So I just picked a percentage. I don't even know how much it was, but it was probably peanuts. I mean, I can imagine even if it was 20%, right? Let's say it's 50 bucks. That's like 10 bucks, right? Oh, man. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not worth a, a fucking round trip from a Monte Pomona. Right? Jeez. And I don't yeah. think I picked, I don't think I picked the 20%. I'll be honest with you. It's probably more like 10. <laughs> so. You're like, well, it took him an hour. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, that's what I was, I was, I was thinking in my head. I'm like, well, what the fuck is taking them so long? It's quicker than this, right? But I didn't realize that that they just send them like, you know, like it should be it, things in our area, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, if you accept it, hey, that's on you, you know. 
it's not my fault. I'm uh, I'm not reading um, in between the lines and looking up where you're driving from and shit like that. But uh, I hate tipping before something comes. Yeah, because you're ob- you're obligated to. And yeah. You don't know if they're gonna do a shitty job, right? Or tipping at the register when you're paying for your food before you get it. You know, like uh, that's just an awkward feeling or whatever. That's the that's the that's greed right there. Like it's embarrassing to to look at, really. Yeah, but the whole tipping thing is bullshit, man. I, you know, I get what these people are saying, like, oh, but you know, I make minimum wage, or I don't even. In some states, I don't even make minimum wage. Listen, god damn it, we <laughs> are we we work for our money just like everybody else, right? And so the, there's this fucking saying that you know, uh, uh, service workers throw out there, like, oh, if you can't afford to tip, you shouldn't even go out to eat. Uh, you don't know if you can't afford to eat. It's like, no, fuck you. Like nobody forced yeah. you into that job, you know. And it's like. Um, back in the day, you know, fuck a $20 tip was a huge tip. Yeah. You know? And so like, if you take your, let's say your, 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 you know, your parents take you out to eat or something like that. And they, you know, they, they come from that old school and, and, and they, you know, the, the meal's over and they, they tip a $20 bill and they think like, Hey, you know, I gave them a nice little tip. You'll get these fucking servers coming back to you. Like, was there something wrong with my service? Like, Oh, but I didn't even get this percentage of tip. It's like, just fucking take it. You know, yeah. nobody's obligated to tip a certain amount. If it is, then put it in the bill. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Let us know before. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what bothers me, man. But you're right. Like the whole like tipping at the counter thing, like Starbucks or something like that. I'm like, fuck that. I, I thought tips tip stood for to ensure prompt service tips. Um, I mean, I guess that's like something that maybe, somebody. Maybe they had one of those like old 40s freaking videos where they were like, you know, or like fifties where it's like black and white and they're doing like instructional videos. Jim is going to be selling blah, 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 or whatever. But even that doesn't make sense. So if it's to ensure prompt service, that means that you're paying ahead of time. It's an insurance to make sure you get prompt service. I don't know if you remember my, my, my method of tipology whiting. If you drink glass, that's right. Okay. So at the bar, Fabian had a a rule. (laughs) It would always tip pretty good if you were a good server. But his rule was if if your um, if his glass ever was like I I feel like it was more, less than half full, like and they didn't offer a refill, then the tip would start getting smaller and smaller until there was no tip. And if there, there was one occasion where we I think we just walked out of a place because the lady took like thirty minutes to get our drinks. Remember that? Like yeah, and to like, bring the fucking my... to bring the bill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Then it was like, yeah, uh, we're we're leaving. Bring us our bill, and then another thirty minutes go by. Yeah. Didn't you have to go and grab the bill? I grabbed my card and got the fuck out. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck just... this shit, man. That was a shitty place too, and I remember like, wasn't that that was the place that always had a line out in front of it? I think. It may like have, we yeah. tried to go to the fancy place for once, and it was just like shit. I'm like, why do people go to these places? We fucking had a much better time down the street at the fucking Hawaiian place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, but um, I also had another method that I picked up from Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah. Uh, oh. Where I would have, <laughs> back when we used to use cash, uh, would, I would have a stack of money. And every time they uh, did, you know, something good, I would add to the stack. And if they messed up, I'd take from the stack, <laughs> right? So your your tip at that point was a living, breathing thing, right? You can see <laughs> it, acknowledge it, you know, and, and know, you know, how you're doing in real time. That's the way it should be. And how does that work for you? Um, I don't go out to eat anymore. I cook at home all the time. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. But I do a better job than them. I mean... Yeah, well, well you must. Me. I mean, you're not spitting in your food. Oh, God. Can you imagine how many bodily fluids uh, we've, you know, we've probably ingested over the years from fucking deranged, yeah. uh, angry people at, uh, you know, restaurants or fast food? Yeah. I was, I was look, uh, listening to some Ricky Gervais, and he was saying, uh, he goes, if I look at a kitchen, he goes, like, if there's a place and you can see the cooks on display, he goes, I don't want to eat there because he goes, I look in that kitchen and he goes, and I'm going to see something disgusting that I don't want to be seeing or whatever, like a hair going in something or like sweat dripping off of something, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. So 
imagine if you had a stack of money at your table and you were taking, you know, money away from that stack and, and the cook saw that. And... Anyways. I'd probably just abandon ship as well. Like, you know what? Let's mutually end this. We're we're not good for each other. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going out to eat anytime soon. You can have you can have your your uh, your fucking uh, your Olive Gardens, everyone. I'm out. <laughs> oh man, that never ending pasta is a fucking draw in. No, they have the, 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 the they have a never ending pasta at some point. You get like a bowl. They give you a tiny bowl of pasta and then you ask for another tiny bowl of pasta. But it's all this shitty pasta with like no meat in it, right? It's just like you can have all the fettuccine you want. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're gonna be paying for that chicken breast, but whatever. Or that shrimp or something, you know? Or just bring your own. <laughs> oh, that's ghetto white. Uh, uh, I've never yeah. heard of bringing like your own salsa yeah. or something like that, but you bring your own shrimp and shit and like a tough. That's hilarious. You just pull out a bag of shrimp. <laughs> Not a bad idea right there. Oh man, I just can't get them here, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But as far as Whitey's revenge tour, right? Um, I forgot to ask: Are you going to go back on the social media? Are you are you creating a new account, or that's it? I feel like I should probably be in touch a little more with people. But it's just like the whole concept like upsets me a little bit. I don't know. Again, like I say, I, f- I feel like we lean too much on it yeah. as a whole. And I wish we didn't. That's all. Well, <laughs> dude, I mean, I, uh, maybe at some point you should check in at least because I had to use a fucking 10 year old picture of you for this graphic that we're going to use for the podcast posting. That's hilarious. I just just like and, and I mean, really, I don't know, remember the last time I posted anything. It's been years. There's only so many ways I can splice and deep fake and uh, animate you uh, to put you on these posters, Whitey. I'm going to have to start like. Oh my God. If, if you have any listeners that can actually animate cartoons, I would love to be a cartoon. You keep making yourself a cartoon. Fabian would, sends these like, yeah. like funny ass texts. Like <laughs> <laughs> I owed him some money and he sends me a text with a picture it's him and it's it's like him like ushering the money on to him with his hand like in a hand gesture and he goes give me some money (laughs) and i'm just sitting here like dying laughing while i'm sending him the fucking money you know (laughs) oh yeah that's the best way to do it right there see i've turned you into a video game yeah right i've created a uh like your own whitey brand logo which by the way you should probably put that on as your as your background, um, when we do the uh, the Tommy Chong interview, you got to look professional, Whitey. <laughs> That's funny, man. Well, I'm a graphic I'm gl- artist. We can figure something out. Listen, I'm glad you got the haircut and everything. You know, I I as well am well groomed at this point, looking dapper. Um, so we got to look good for that interview. But I can't have your background just being any any random thing. Yeah. Hey, Fabian, you don't know how to dance, right? Do you dance, Fabian? Uh, I mean, I I. If because I w- Chong dances, to. I mean, like Chong dances, like he's been dancing for like thirty years or something like that. What, was he? I, I didn't. I don't watch Dancing with the Stars. Was, did you watch that? Was 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 he any good? So I I did watch it. Yeah, the guy can the guy can move. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's. Uh, I didn't expect to see him on Dancing with the Stars, and then all of a sudden, like it turns out, he's been tangoing for like twenty years. What the hell? Yeah. I don't know how yeah. long exactly it's been. We could ask him, you know, but um, oh. I'm telling yeah. you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting, man, because like everything that we can, anything that we can think of, there's got to be a story there, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, unless it's a complete dud interview and like he's just too stoned and doesn't give us anything, but I seriously doubt that. Yeah, no, I don't know. Like the guy, even if the guy is stoned, like he, you know, when you're always that same way even keel it doesn't even matter i mean like the the guy gives good interviews i mean uh, and just yeah we'll, well, we'll get some gold to, out of there i don't expect him to be in full chong mode you know like i think there was this uh documentary i was watching with with them where right, right before i went to jail yeah it's called aka uh tommy chong yeah i saw um, that one and um they're asking him in, in one of the scenes like hey can you do that in like 
you know, full like character, like Tom Strong, he's like, no. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna make the jokes as me, you know? Yeah. But they wanted him to put on put on the whole, hey, I'm Tommy Chong, man. You know, like yes. that whole thing. Dude, that's one thing I'm gonna point out to him too. I'm like, you if you hear that like style of voice and you say man at the end of something, like that's instantly recognizable. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt who that is. Mm-hmm. That and I'm like, you are you're a Halloween costume. Yeah, no shit. You know? Just if you just throw on a fucking a wig, a beard, and a red bandana, like you already know. Yep. You know, it's either that or your X Pac. <laughs> yeah. I just finished watching that 90s show. That was pretty funny. I was gonna ask you about that too. I, I thought it sucked. I got I got I couldn't get through that first episode. I, you know what it seemed like to me? It seemed like a fucking Disney Channel version of that 70s show. I, I told somebody that I swear to God, I told somebody that I go, they go, how was that 90s show? I said, look, I go, you watch it at your age because you're nostalgic and you want to see, you know, what happened to everybody. Then so that's why we're interested in it. But the writing for the kids is just like a Nick or a Disney channel it's show. Fucking terrible, dude. And that that's is- exactly how I, I, I literally just had that conversation with somebody like two days ago. So <laughs> You, you nailed it, though. I, I feel like that's exactly it. Like, I, I've, I almost felt embarrassed watching it because I'm like, fuck, man, this is like real, like Disney Channel type shit. You know, yeah. I think um, obviously the, the, the main characters from the main show, from that 70s show, with their, you know, their, uh, with their cameos or their roles or whatever, they're really good. You know, yeah. they're, they're, you know, they're funny. They're, they're you know, you, they're believable and everything. But the kids yeah, yeah. are fucking terrible, man. Like I um, thought, I thought Eric's kid was perfect. His, I was gonna say, with that exception, the yeah. main girl, she's she's a good actress, right? But the yeah. others are fucking terrible. Like the she was the, just as awkward as he was, you know. Like she she really felt like a foreman. Yeah. <laughs> the, the now the writing is bad though, because like all the lines that are supposed to be jokes are just you know. Stupid. I think it's the it's the acting on some of the kids. Yeah. Part. The, the 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 Asian kid, he's terrible. Yeah, my but, wife hated the Asian. She's like, why does he have to be so, you know, out there or whatever? Like, even Fez wasn't that out there, you know? Like, I felt like they were trying to make him, like, a Fez or something. Mm-hmm. I was trying to pinpoint who, because they had, like, I they made you feel like there was a counterpart to every person in the original show. Yeah. Like, the, the chick next door was supposed to be Hyde, right? Like, the her uh, foreman's daughter's friend. Mm-hmm. That's, what I, that's what i was trying to figure out but i don't know but i was gonna say her like the half black i don't know if she's half black but she looks like it or uh, um the mixed girl and then her her brother the yeah. dumb one terrible man just terrible <laughs> terrible yeah. acting and, and then the the that brother's girlfriend that's kind of i guess that's supposed to be like the kelso jackie relationship yeah right but then they have a kelso kid right so i don't know i just i didn't like it um I, I barely stomached my way through uh, first episode. I I don't know if it gets any better. Does it get any better? I, I okay. I felt awkward during the first episode, like you did. But then, like as it went on, it got better. I I feel. Give it a, give it another episode or so. You'll know if you like it. Um, Dude, to me, it was almost like Fuller House right away. I'm like, fuck this. The worst one to me was Girl Meets World. I couldn't get through Girl Meets World at all. Well, like I, I got through Fuller House. Well, but, that literally. But here's was- here's the thing. Like here's the thing. I, I was on a kick of showing uh, my wife all the old shows. So I showed her like Family Matters. She watched Urkel. She watched King of the Hill. I showed her Married with Children, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was one of the shows that I I made sure to show her. Yeah, well, <laughs> Girl Meets World literally was a Disney show, so now we know. Yeah, well, I, I, so we started with the original Full House. That's how you got to do it, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, the, you know, once you get through nine seasons of that and you're like, especially on a binge, you know, you're like, well, fuck, this one ended. Might as well turn on the next one. And then it feels kind of like a continuation. But you got a refresher of all the old moments now. And, you know, and there's a lot to cover in, in these shows because they went on for so many years. Mm-hmm. I think here's the problem, right? They know you're going to get that nostalgia pop, right? They know they're going to get that with these things, with these reboots. Yeah. Um, But the problem is they try to shoehorn in these counterpart characters that are just like, you know, or, or, you know, they kind of tip, you know, tip their, their, their head a little bit and nod and wink and everything like, 
it's just like the last, you know, the last, you, uh, you know, they're it, just hoping that they can get rid of the original cast or they can retire at some point and they can just pass the torch to this new, right. You know, group. But, but let me tell you what works. Cobra Kai works. Right. I can't um, believe they're fucking canceling Cobra Kai. The Netflix is horrible for doing all that all the time. They canceled the Punisher. They canceled Cobra Kai. They canceled. Well, they, they're good shows. They got ratings, you know, I think Cobra Kai, um, it, it kind of, it, it hit its peak though, because the kids are going to be like 30 when they're, when they're done with it, <laughs> you know, but um, that was a good formula as was, if we're talking just, you know, entertainment in general, the Creed movies. Right. And those are all, those are nostalgia pieces as well. The reason why is because yes, they have, you know, their, their nostalgic characters and they focus on them um, and, and they build the story, but they're not just shoehorning in their, their, their counterpart clone. Right? I hate to say it, but I've never seen any of the Creed movies, and oh, I feel God like damn. I should have seen them. Just God damn it. I stopped with Rocky Six or whatever it was. Oh, they're uh, good. They're good. And you a boxing fan, you'll love it. Yeah, I've heard that. And I I just don't know. Like uh I think what it is is uh, you know, I watch most of my movies with my wife, and I don't think I can get her to sit through a boxing movie. She didn't like uh like well, sports like that. Like I watch UFC and stuff, but I have to do it like in the corner over here, you know. <laughs> Has she seen any of the Rocky movies? Um, she saw the first one, I think. Maybe she saw the third one. I don't know. I, I <sighs> because those are more than just boxing. I, movies. I remember seeing the first. I feel like I forced her to see the first one. <laughs> have you watched? You know, all the way. You know, from Rocky Rocky one to Rocky four. Like yeah, five is you know whatever it is what it is it's, it was you know it was 90s you know? yeah but if you watch one through four i liked rocky not, five though i, I did too yeah I, I did too you know um touch me and i'll sue touch me and i'll sue right um but yeah i i i liked i liked that one but i was gonna say uh rocky one through four they're more than just boxing movies buddy it's one of the greatest love stories ever between rocky and apollo <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. apollo uh, well uh, apollo when he was still with us that's what i'm saying like the the tragedy in in, in part four you know did, did you ever see arrested development where carl weathers was was making carl weathers stew no i actually have never seen that show okay so carl weathers stew um carl weathers would go to the table at the like restaurants that he was eating at uh, and like if you had leftovers, he'd be like, he'd take your rib bone. He's like, if you got a rib bone or whatever, he goes, you just add some potato or whatever, you know, like a carrot, you know, and uh, you got yourself a stew. He goes, um, so so he's he's at the restaurant. And he's asking everybody for the leftovers. It's it's like embarrassing because it's Carl Weathers, you know, like he's, uh huh. It's just they they it's a it's a joke, you know. I mean, he was a uh, he was David Cross's uh, acting coach in that show. Oh, so okay. So that was like the joke on the show that was that he's running like this, like like uh, nobody actor school now. Like he's like he's a has been, you know. Uh huh. Even though obviously it's Carl fucking Weathers, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> one ha- one half of the greatest boxing love story ever. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's just funny to imagine somebody like that, and then you know, no, it's not true. I don't know. Why do you, you know, uh, we, we did a lot of wrestling and, and hanging out and everything like that. How come we never ran on the beach with like half belly shirts and uh, shorty shorts? You weren't running on the beach. I remember fondly running on the beach with half belly shirts. Oh, well, somebody else. I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, man. One time uh... I remember running on the beach was uh, uh, when, when, when you told me that uh, I was going to get outran by Potter's wife. Oh, my God. And I told them, too. I go, watch, I'm going to get him to the car. And sure enough, you sprang to life. It's amazing. Uh, That's on another podcast. I think we talked about that on the uh, the Macy and Potter podcast, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, that worked. Why do you know? You know how to get me to move from there? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah I man. know my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, shit, man. Like I said, you know, I told people we weren't gonna, you know, give them anything other than random today, and uh, all. Uh, you know, uh, all cards on the table. This is a filler episode. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm a filler. That's great. Hey, Fill- we gotta- we're filling your glass with wine in a box. And that's the way it is. You know, yep. yeah, when, if, if, if ever I don't have a guest or somebody craps out, 
I'm gonna be like, hey, why do you want to do another wine in a box? Right? Oh man, well let's get another 20k, man. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully the people from Nepal and India have returned. Because after I took my hiatus, the numbers dropped a bit. I think they thought I was done, but maybe after they they see the return of Whitey, uh, Whitey's revenge, you know, it'll 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 increase the the numbers a bit again. I feel like the title itself makes me want to click on the damn thing. Like, what is Whitey up to now, and what's he revenging? Well, you know, society in general. <laughs> you know? Oh man, society has put you here, Whitey, and you want revenge. That's right. I want reparations. Damn it. Oh, we can't oh I can't wait to talk to Potter about reparations. Oh my god, yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a whole other episode, man. <laughs> you Jesus know, real Christ. quick, um, I had and I'll tell Potter when we go on a shit show, but I had somebody uh message me like, Yeah, you know, I like your guys' shit show, but your friend Potter needs to learn <laughs> learn to uh, uh uh put together his arguments a little better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I <sighs> guess, you know. Because, you know, Potter, Potter is very uh, passionate about what he believes in, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's very Hank Hill, but, which, by the way, that's coming back to you. Hell Dude, yeah. I'm so fucking looking forward to seeing King of the Hill again. I just, I don't even care if, uh, it's 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 perfect. The people who aren't going to be there anymore are kind of, like, they're easy to write off, unfortunately. <laughs> again, I, I just hope they don't do the whole nostalgia pop, and then it's over. But yeah. they did. Uh, my judge did Beavis and Buttheads return very well, so I have that, high hopes. High I, hopes for for King. Of I Butt. love that freaking new Beavis and Butthead. I hope to see lots more of that. I mean, I even like that movie they came out with. Yeah, that was really good too. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I hope uh, they do that justice because they have you know the original you know writing crew and and everything on it. So I think it's going to be good. I'll but, tell you what. Yeah, we've filled our cup to the brim. With Whitey's cheap wine in a box, right? We'll get more of these out there at some point, but definitely excited for the next episode. And uh, you know, um, that's gonna be that's gonna that's kind of probably gonna be the biggest episode so far, you know. So take uh, so. You know, be on the lookout for that. Uh, but for now, we're gonna bid adieu to Whitey, and uh, we'll see we'll we'll see you in a little bit, Whitey. We we'll get uh, and remember, get bring. Oh, a fucking good weed question for Mr. Chong. <coughs> Sorry. What? What, man? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, right, you just thought of Tommy Chong right now. I did. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, good we'll, stuff. Thanks for having we'll, me. And we'll, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. And for everybody listening at home, I appreciate it. Thank you. Fuck you. Good night. Podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Like, follow, and share on Facebook and Instagram at Ignorance of Strength Podcast and on Twitter at The Ignorance Pod.